Chicago is an Australian zombie movie set in the outback, and like most of the better horror films, its concerns go far deeper than the superficial threats provided by the unstoppable undead. The film seeks to be seen as a metaphor for, among other things, the destruction of the environment and a deep-rooted fear of foreigners and a foreign invasion. It's an expansion of a seven-minute short film with the same title, made in 2013 by directors Yolanda Ramke and Ben Howling. And although the screenplay by Ramke downplays the ultra-violence often found in films belonging to this genre, it's still unusually unsettling. The film introduces two families, one white, the other Aboriginal. Andy, Martin Freeman, and his wife Kay, Susie Porter, are desperate to protect their baby daughter, Rosie, from the plague. They've decided that they're safer on water than on land, and so they're travelling in a houseboat down a wide river, putting themselves at a distance from the mayhem taking place ashore. But they're running short of supplies, and when they come across a wrecked and abandoned yacht, the temptation to forage on board for essentials proves overwhelming. This scene is handled with textbook suspense, the more so because the viewer is not, at this point, allowed to witness what actually happens. The other family in the film is represented by Toomey, Simone Landers, who's about 12 years old. Her father, Willie, Bruce R. Carter, has already been infected, but Toomey, supported by members of her family and the tribal clever man, David Gulpalil, is attempting to employ traditional methods to combat the scourge. During the course of the film, we encounter other survivors. The most notable of these is Vic, Anthony Hayes, who was working in the fracking industry before the advent of the plague. Together with the traumatised Lorraine, Karen Pistorius, his unwilling partner, Vic has devised a brutally novel method of warding off the virals, a method that evokes the treatment of some white settlers towards Aboriginal people in times gone by. Although mild in comparison with many American or even European horror films, Cargo still contains confronting scenes. Ramke and Howling are at their best when they orchestrate scenes that depend on suspense rather than overt horror, and they're helped immeasurably by the outstanding cinematography of Geoffrey Simpson, whose use of spectacular South Australian locations gives the film a tremendous boost. Cargo, in common with the best zombie films, is not really about voracious bloodsuckers. It's more about the degradation of the environment, racism, the importance of family. There's a lot going on beneath the surface in this modestly accomplished feature film debut, and I'm giving it three and a half stars.